Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a nice radical. We have the square root of a minus the square root of a squared minus nine, and we're going to be simplifying this expression and find something in terms of a. In other words, we're going to be denesting this radical even though we do not know the value of a. So let's go ahead and look at a numerical example. Hopefully that'll help us understand what's going on here and then we'll proceed with the solution. And I'll be presenting two methods. Actually, never mind. I'll be presenting three methods. What second and third are kind of similar. That's why I wanted to initially say second or two methods. Anyways, so let's go ahead and replace a with four, for example. And why did I pick four? Why not one? What happens if you replace a with one? You get the square root of one minus the square root of one minus nine, which is negative eight. Uh oh, we get a complex non-real number. So we have to be careful. We kind of need to think about the domain. So a squared minus nine needs to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Which implies that a is greater than or equal to three or a is less than or equal to negative three. Obviously you can solve this by factoring using difference of two squares and then making a table or whatever you like, you'll find these intervals. Uh, and I do find that some numbers are negative, some numbers are positive, but we found out that even with small values of positive integers, we got into trouble. So do you think anything less than negative three would work? For example, what happens if a is equal to negative four? Again, I'm gonna get back to this, a equals four, but before that, I wanna look at the bad cases. Is this a bad case? If a is equal to negative four, well, it looks like when I checked the domain, it worked, but actually I didn't check the whole thing by the way. Negative four minus, negative uh, four squared is 16 minus nine is a seven. So we're gonna get something like this. Uh-oh, this expression is less than zero. So this is not real either. So we're kind of getting into trouble with these values. Let's go ahead and stick to a being greater than or equal to three, which brings us back to a equals four. And if a is equal to four, you're actually gonna get the opposite of what you got here. Not the opposite, but maybe the conjugate or something like that, this expression. So if a is equal to four, you get that. Oops, not that one. If a is equal to four. Now, how do you simplify this? Let me tell you. This can be simplified into root 14 minus root two divided by two. If you square both sides, you're gonna realize what I'm talking about. Let me not tell you how to do it right now, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start with the first method now. I don't think I announced it yet. First method first, okay. So we're gonna set this expression the radical expression equal to the difference of two radicals. Our goal is to denest, and that implies that we can only have a single radical at a time. So you can't have a square root under a square root. Make sense? That's what denested means. And these are called nested square roots. Square roots within square roots, okay? How do you simplify this? Square both sides. That's what we do most of the time, right? With radical equations. That gives us a minus the square root of a squared minus nine equals x plus y minus two root xy. I put the x and y together because they kind of make up the irrational, I mean the rational part, which is this. So x plus y needs to be a, and this needs to be square root of a squared minus nine. Notice that they both have a minus sign, so I totally ignored it. If they didn't, one of them had a plus sign, you would have to consider that as well. From here, we get a system of equations, x plus y equals a, and two root xy equals square root of a squared minus nine. Obviously, there's a couple different ways to go about it. Maybe one way I'm thinking about is you can go ahead and add these equations up that will give you root x plus root y squared, and then you'll have a plus square root of a squared minus nine. And then from here, you could probably say something like, okay, root x plus root y, or maybe the other way around is probably better that way. The square root of a plus the square root of a squared minus nine is equal to root x plus root y. So is this gonna help us? Let's go ahead and consider the original equation, which is this one. And this is kind of like a direct consequence because if you think about um, x and y here being rational here, this would work. Kind of like the binomial theorem allows you to do this, right? Now, 
In this case, I have two equations, so I could probably multiply these together. And when I multiply them together, I should be getting under the radical a squared minus the quantity a squared minus 9. That comes from difference of two squares. And on the right-hand side, from difference of two squares, I get x minus y. Notice that under the radical, we have a 9, which is 3. So from here, we get x minus y is equal to 3. Is that going to be helpful? I'm not exactly sure, but hopefully it will. But remember, our goal was to solve for um, x and y, and we only got x minus y equals 3. So what about x and y specific, like, individual values, right? How do you find them? Well, I have x plus y equals a, and now I can go ahead and use this system. Remember, our answer is going to be in terms of a, so we're not expecting to get something numerical, totally, but something in terms of a, rather. So if you solve this system, add them up and divide by 2, x from here is going to be a plus 3 over 2, and y is just going to be a minus 3 over 2. Notice that uh, the order matters here because of the minus sign, so x is bigger than y in this case. Make sense? And since we assume that, okay, our expression is going to equal the square root of x plus, I mean minus the square root of y, from here our expression simplifies as follows, square root of a plus 3 over 2 minus the square root of a minus 3 over 2. So that should be the answer, but that's, actually, this wasn't the intended first method, but maybe we can go ahead and uh, do what I was planning to do for the first method with the second method that will give us more options. Anyways, let's get, let me get back to the same point. We had x plus y equals a and 2 root xy equals square root of a squared minus 9. Remember that comes from setting these um, things, uh, rationals equal to rationals and irrationals to rationals, okay? So that gives us a system, right? And let's solve the system as follows. Square both sides here, that gives us 4xy equals a squared minus 9, and then we get x plus y equals a. Let's go ahead and isolate y from here and write it as a minus x, and let's go ahead and plug it in here, okay? That will give us 4x times y, which is a minus x, equals a squared minus 9. Our goal is to solve for x. Let's go ahead and distribute 4ax minus 4x squared equals a squared minus 9. And now let's go ahead and what? Turn this into a full quadratic, right? And then solve using the quadratic formula because I do not see factoring. Uh, I, I do not really see a way of factoring this expression right away. So x from here is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 16a squared, minus 4ac, that's going to be a 16, times the quantity a squared minus 9, and then all of that is divided by 8. We can go ahead and simplify it, actually. We can take out a 16, but before that, we could also simplify the radical a little bit. Uh, 16a squared minus 16a squared is equal to 9. 16 minus 9 is equal to 144. You could also write it as 16 times 9. No big deal because we do know that the square root of 144 is 12, so that should simplify nicely anyways. And then once you divide everything by 4, you're going to get a plus 3 over 2 and a minus 3 over 2, which is the exact same values that we found with the first method. So I told you that I was going to show you uh, th three methods, right? I could also do uh, two a and 2b, 2b or not 2b, I don't know if I should do that. Anyways, let's just continue since I already made the joke. I can go ahead and proceed with the third method, okay? Ready? Now, with the third method, we're going to take this expression and simplify it. But before we simplify it, we can kind of do a 3a and 3b here. The first one would be, you know what, I'm just going to show you one because I believe this has been too long already. Multiply by root 2 and divide by that inside you're going to get 2a minus 2 times the square root of a squared minus 9 all over root 2. Now, if you consider the top, I can factor out the, uh, not factor out, but more like factor the a squared minus 9 into a difference of two squares. And now, we're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus or mathemagic. Write the 2a as a plus 3 plus a minus 3. That's 2a, right? Because the 3s are going to cancel out. And then minus this minus that, and guess what that gives you? That gives you a perfect square, and isn't that perfect? Yes, 
This basically gives you, if you consider this, root a plus 3 minus root a minus 3 squared, right? But you also have the square root of that, so they're going to cancel out, but you also have the root 2 at the bottom, so they're going to cancel out, and then that leaves us with the exact same thing that we found before, and this time I showed you more methods than last time. Go ahead and check out the last video as well, because that was also fun to solve. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.